Hey Vault Hunters, Stud Doogie here with my penultimate Proving Grounds video, which is also going to be our first COV Proving Grounds. Um, in the previous two Proving Grounds speedruns that I did, those were the Malawan ones. I didn't do any commentary on those because there really wasn't much to it. It's really basically just brainstorm everything when there's more than one enemy. Otherwise, switch to the Maggie, and that pretty much covered everything uh, for those. So, no commentary there. This one, though, um, I think some commentary might be useful. So, if you saw my Trial of Instinct video, then the build is going to be similar with a couple tweaks. So, let's just take a look at what that is. Uh, let's, well, before we do that, two additional projectiles. See, I, I keep getting two additional projectiles. Um, mayhem modifier and the reason why I'm bringing that to your attention is because I've been poking fun at a thread on the forum where people claim that two additional projectiles modifier is the worst thing ever and it just makes mayhem on uh, mayhem unplayable and just a bunch of whining and belly aching so um, I'm gonna do it with two uh, additional projectiles and we'll see what happens uh, so let's get into the build and the gear uh, let's start with the gear. So, um, I've, I've run a couple variants, uh, different builds trying to do this thing. And I've gotten really, really close with my shotgun build. And the problem with the shotgun build is that it's dependent on, on tank spawning. Once a tank spawn, that's pretty much it for the run. Um, so that's not a consistent way to do it. It's a way to do it, but it's just not consistent. The other way I did it was with a, uh, a terror build, but that was using the um, the ammo, the extra projectile stacking glitch, and uh, you know that's also not consistent. So, but this one turns out to be rather consistent, and we'll go over that. So it's a heavy weapon build, and it's similar to the Trial of Instinct build with a couple variants. Um, in the Trial of Instinct build, we used um, we used this Nukem as the primary weapon, and then we used the Scourge as a kind of a cleanup weapon in some instances. We're going to flip that around. In this one, the Nukem is going to be, I mean, the Scourge is going to be the primary weapon, and the Nukem is going to be our cleanup weapon. And the reason for that has to do with how the, the, uh, the Nukem works and how the maps are built. So what I've observed is that if an enemy is not on the same physical plane as the, uh, the, the Nukem round when it goes off, they don't suffer splash damage, right? We saw that in the, um, in the creature run where if you try to kill a Varkid spot, you couldn't kill it with splash damage. You had to make direct contact with it. We saw that also when we had Varkids that were on their pyre thingies, um, until they touched the ground, the AOE splash damage wouldn't kill them. So it seems to not just apply to that kind of situation, but if, for, for example, uh, an enemy is on top of some stairs and you're on the bottom and the weapon, the round explodes at the bottom of the stairs, even though the splash radius is enough to kill the enemy, they don't actually get killed for some weird reason. So there are too many vertical spaces on the Proving Grounds map why uh, the Scourge is a better weapon to use than to depend on the splash damage of the Nukem to get the enemy killed. So that's why we're flipping the script on that. Now I'm using two different Scourges here. One here I got just recently for Sentinel Cryer. As a matter of fact, I got it when I completed the um, the Trial of Supremacy run. Um, it was in a it was in a bank. Oh, not the bank. What do you call it again? The Lost Loot thingy. So, this is a re recent edition that just world dropped for me. Thank you very much, game. And then we have the uh, the clone swap one. So whenever our Sentinel's out, we're gonna do that. Whenever we swap with our clone, we'll use this one. This is just a min max sync. Otherwise, we really only use need two. So I'm gonna use all the slots. Um, the face puncher, of course, we're gonna give that to our clone, so we get infinite ammo. And we're gonna, you know, we've seen this before. Improved version OM, piss, um, our sing dead com, and the 
artifact you've been using. So if you've seen the Trial of Instinct run or the, the one with the spider ants, you know this build. Okay, so let's look at the gear, the, uh, the skill tree. Couple changes in this tree. The big one is we're making sure that we have five points in uh, cool hand. So this used to be four points here, four points here, one point here. Now we're making sure that we put two points here. And the reason is the way enemies spawn in this particular Proving Grounds is they spawn sparsely. Um, so you want the extra time so that you can move further into the map to cause the other enemies to spawn, which you then have to kill and then move again to cause the other enemies to spawn. So it's not like everything just spawns as soon as you show up. It's on this kind of uh, delay timer that's triggered by you killing and moving through the map. So we just want to give ourselves maximum duration or the best, not necessarily maximum because we don't need full 18%. 12 is good enough to keep our actions or action skills going. So that's why there are two points here versus one. And now that we're using three rockets, I just want to maximize the reload speed because our DPS is going to be bounded by reload, right? So we have three rockets. So imagine having to uh, reload three rocket launchers one after the other which is why we want the extra reload speed. Uh, two is more than enough for our movement speed when you consider that we have three in supersonic man. So the combination of um, just, you know, two in violent speed and supersonic man is enough to get a zippity zuda through the, uh, through the map. One second. A whole lot of words, so I needed some water. Okay. Um, so that's the change in this tree. In this tree, we no longer have two points in borrowed time. We only have one, and now we have a point in old U. And the reason for the point in old U is specific to uh, this particular map. And the situation this is designed to solve is if we kill everything and all we're left with is an anointed and we go down, we're not going to get a second win without all of our kill skills. You know, we need playing dirty to do maximum damage and playing dirty will not be available to us while we're in fight for our life. So having our clone available and being able to use our clone to get a second win, that's how we solve that problem. So that is why we now have a point in old U where before um, when we were doing the creatures, we had no problems getting second wins, killing a badass or any other creature, but if we're faced with an anointed tank, for example, we definitely won't be able to get up um, just from our guns unless we're just really, really lucky. So that's the only change. Okay. Um, and then, no, so that's the gear and that's the build. Let's get this party started. Alrighty. Put him here. Start there. Switch that. Swap so we don't die. And now we're going to start using... He's supposed to come out right here. And kill this guy. So when there's just one of them... Now the guy on the stairs that's going to come up next... He needs the Scourge. Because for some ungodly reason... Uh, that's what I was talking about before. About... Um, Oh, let's swap, let's swap. Watch this. They're not getting get. Yeah, he got killed that time. Weird. Okay, he's dead. That's double projectiles, by the way. But it's all good. We don't care. We're just going to keep it moving. Keep the scourge scourging. Okay, he spawned. Let's put him in a nice, juicy spot for these guys. We'll just blow these guys up. And who else is left? Now we're going to leave him. Because we're going to use the Scourge at range. So we'll do that. Swap. And then we're just going to use the Scourge at range. And so he's got a lot of ground to cover to kill a lot of stuff. So we're not even worried about it. Put him up here. Here's a tank. I can hear him. 
I don't know why he's not dead. Alrighty, let's put him up. Get that reload going. Got two of them, it seems. Get that reload. And we're gonna play it cute. We're gonna swap, put him here, and go on the other side. And that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna swap back and forth on both sides. Why are we both on the same side? That's not supposed to happen. We're just going to hide until he comes back. I'm going to put him up here. And pop that. Right on the top of the heads. Alright, from here on in, it's going to be all scourge all the time. Because they come out of the stairs and you can't get them. I'm also going to put them right here in preparation for when the ship comes. And here's the ship. And we're just going to blast all these guys with one boom. Alright. We're going to turn around and shoot, shoot, and swap. So we do that to get things to spawn. We'll just, why is this guy not dead? Put him up here. Twenty-six minutes. We're a little bit slower than my best time, but. I'm not going to sweat it. I don't know who that is. Alright, we're going to use the swap one. Go get him, Zoomer! And he's dead. By the time we get down there, his health should be back. We'll do it again. I don't know why his health is not coming back. There it is. We'll just fire off both. Get that swap. And that's it. Nicely done. Pretty straightforward. Some things didn't work perfectly as I would have liked, like the swapping on both on the opposite sides of that uh, next to last zone, but you guys get the idea. It's pretty straightforward. And once again, now here I just want to point out, and this is, I'm just tongue-in-cheeking at those uh, people on the forums who claim 2x is just ridiculous. This is a COV uh, bit of content, and I did not have any problems with 2x projectiles on a build that was dependent on an amp shield being full. So clearly, 2x is not as bad as people are making it out to be. All right, guys, thank you for watching, and... Um, I'll catch you in the next one. It's probably going to be a minute before I get the Trial of Fervor done because that one is, is one of some of the hardest content in the game. And I need to do a lot of testing to come up with a build that will work consistently um, for you guys. So um, it might take a week or so before I get that done or maybe even longer. I'll catch you guys in the next one and thanks for watching again.